everybody. It's almost time for St. Patrick's Day, and I have a new book I'd like to share with you, Secrets Among the Shamrocks. Now, this is the third in a series with Casey Stengel, who started out in Murder Among the Orchids, where she found her boss dead in his greenhouse of orchids, and she got involved in trying to investigate who had murdered him. Well, after that whole situation, she decided to take a cruise to relax. And what happens? She found another dead body in the deck chair next to her, in death among the deck chairs. Well, now comes secret among the shamrocks. And you guessed it, Casey finds another body. Only this time, she had some help. Let me read you a little bit about the discovery. When we finished sorting through books, I found the empty boxes that had held our new linens and other household items. And we filled them with the books for the town library donation. They were too heavy for us to lift, so Millie went to see if the men were free to load them into Finn's truck. Allie came into the library carrying an old tennis ball. She dropped it on the floor in front of me, hunched down, and then sprang up as if she wanted to run. Okay, girl, I said, I recognize cabin fever when I see it. I picked up the ball and her ears perked. Her tail went into high gear as it wagged. She started turning circles, dancing in front of me. I laughed. Let's go outside so we don't cause any trouble in here. She knew exactly what I meant and beat me to the front door where she sat impatiently waiting, her bottom barely touching the floor and her tail sweeping back and forth. Outside, I led her to an open grassy area and tossed the ball. She eagerly retrieved it and dropped it at my feet. We did that several times. Each time I tossed it just a little further. It gave me time to take in the fresh air and sunshine of a perfect day. I could smell the sea air as the wind carried it up from the harbor. I noticed that Finn had started on an area that Evelyn hoped would be a garden from which she could get fresh vegetables and herbs for cooking. Allie bounded toward me again, ready for another toss of the ball. This time she teased me with it before she finally let go and I could give it a good toss. She took off running and caught up with it as it bounced, but she stopped after picking up the ball and looked out into the distance. A large flock of gulls had landed by the castle. Allie dropped the ball and bounded across the grass in the direction of the castle and the gulls. Allie, Allie, I called. She never hesitated. The herding instinct had taken over and she was going to round up those gulls. How she expected to do that when they were just gonna fly off was beyond me. But I was concerned she would continue to chase after them and I wouldn't get her back. I hustled as fast as I could over the rough terrain of tufted grass to catch up with her. By the time I was near, she had already chased off the gulls and was sniffing the ground as if to wonder where they'd gone. Just as I was about to catch up with her again, she started running, but this time she stopped every few yards to sniff the ground. I took a moment to pause and catch my breath. Was this dog part bloodhound as well as border collie? She seemed to be on the trail of something. My heart sunk as she disappeared around the end wall of the castle. Allie, Allie, like an insistent teenager bent on proclaiming her own independence, she ignored me. My pulse quickened and I rounded the wall and looked for her. She was stopped and sniffing around a pile of rocks uh, that obviously had collapsed from the wall. While I was nervous about getting too close to the wall, I knew I needed to get close enough to grab her collar and lead her back home. I crept forward carefully, hoping I didn't spook her into running again. What do you have there, girl? She lifted her head for a moment to look at me and then lowered it again. She was intent on what she had found and kept excitedly sniffing around the rocks. Gotcha. I said as I reached down and hooked my fingers through her collar. She looked up at me with great big eyes as if trying to tell me something and then pulled my arm down as her nose went to the pile of rocks again. What is it, girl? She was whining now. I looked closer and realized there was a hand poking out between the rocks. A wave of dizziness came over me as I realized someone was buried under those rocks. Was he still alive? It wasn't one of our men, was it? They hadn't talked of working over here today. My stomach churned and my race, pulse raced. Still holding Allie with one hand, I reached down and touched the hand that was there. Cold, very cold. I doubted with all the weight upon him he could possibly be anything but dead. 
A check of his wrist indicated no pulse. Allie, be a good girl, I said as, at her as she tried to wiggle free from me. I managed to pull my cell phone from my pocket. Thank goodness Charles had gotten me local service on a new phone. I tapped his number on my contact list. Casey, trying out the new phone? Charles laughed as he was answered. No, my voice was a bit shaky. Uh, I, I found something at the castle. You better come. Well, the castle shamrock holds lots of secrets and they unfold as more and more Casey investigates what's going on with everything there. Kind of a weird guest, an over anxious colleague, and lots and lots of interesting landscape and scenery and tales of Ireland. So have a good day. And if you're up for it, have a good read. I've given you lots of choices.